Being a productivity blogger, one of the most common questions I get is what productivity tools and apps do you recommend the most or what do you use on, on the most uh, frequent basis? So what I have here is a list, a quick fire list of kind of my favorite tools. Now I don't have the time to go into each one of these. So if you want to learn more about any of these, have a look on my website or on my YouTube channel to see, just to read more about each of these. Um, but here we go. So first app is Text Expander. Now Text Expander is a an app you can use to program in things like email templates. So you write out your email and you create a shortcut to type that email. So you could create a little abbreviation like um, semicolon welcome and then a welcome email fills out into your browser or into your email client. Now that's a very simple example but you can actually customize it. You can have fill in sections for like the person's name so you can customize it. You can have optional paragraphs that you turn on and off. Um, so you can do some really cool quite advanced things actually. It's, it's very simple to get started with but actually is really useful for even power users as well. And I use Text Expander all the time for email templates, responding to people, sending out proposals, writing proposals in fact. Um, writing my email address, phone numbers, address, any bit of text that I need to type on a regular basis I have programmed into Text Expander. And this is a tool that I use probably dozens of times per day. Next up, I have one password. Obviously this helps me to be very secure and safe online because instead of having the same password or the, a variation of the same password for everything, I can actually create strong, unique passwords for everything that they all get stored in here. And it sounds like a tedious tool to be using that's gonna slow you down. And it's actually the opposite is true. It actually speeds up that login process. Because when you go to a website, you do the quick keyboard shortcut and you quickly hit enter to put in your login details. And it actually makes logging in a lot quicker and easier. Um, so yeah, I love it because it helps me to be faster with logging in and it actually helps me to be secure and safe online. Uh, next up I have Alfred or kind of slash copy clip. And the main feature of Alfred that I really like is the, the copy, um, copy dashboard, like when you copy text on your computer, it saves it to a little library. And if you don't want to use Alfred, uh, copy clip, or if you're on a PC, there are a number of applications you can find that will do the same thing. But uh, often, you know, we're all copying bits of text, emails and things hundreds of times a day. And sometimes you want to go back and get access to that same bit of text that you copied. And th it's amazing using a tool like this, how much it can speed up my work just by being able to quickly access old bits of text that I've copied. I use this again dozens of times per day. Next up we have Asana. Um, as most people know who have looked at my website, uh, I'm a big Asana fan and I now consult with companies to help them with Asana to structure their accounts and train their teams. And Asana is just my go-to task and project management tool. I've been using it for maybe five or six years by now. Absolutely love it. And for my calendar, I use uh, just the Apple calendar because it, sync, it just works really well with the Mac and with my iPhone as well. So it's nothing special. It's you know, fairly simple and I sync my Google calendar to that as well. Um, and yeah, it's just the kind of tool I've been using for years. For style, file storage, I use Dropbox. Again, fairly simple, nothing too special here. It tends to be the best for me because it's great at sharing files with other people. And yeah, you can get quite a lot of storage for a fairly good price. I've got Apple Photos here as well. And this is because you know productivity apps aren't just for work. Apple Photos I really enjoy using and it's gotten a lot better over the last few years and it's a really nice, it, I just think it's a really nice experience, a really nice way of organizing those important photos, you know, quickly favoriting the best ones and this, it's just a really nice photo browsing and organizing experience so I really enjoy Apple Photos. Everyone needs some kind of note-taking app. I've been using Evernote for years. I'm actually now experimenting with Apple Notes to see if there's any pros to switching to there so I'm currently in between Apple Notes and Evernote and yeah, I mean there are pros and cons in each. Um, I like the simplicity of Apple Note, but Evernote has a few more power features. Um, but no, two great note-taking note tools that are worth looking into. Next up I have Backblaze. Now Backblaze is an app that runs in the background on your computer and it keeps a complete copy of your computer stored online so that you've got a backup. So if you ever lose your computer, Backblaze can actually ship you a clone of your computer on a hard drive for you to restore. And for like a few dollars a month, it's super cheap. It's well worth having those online backups and it makes it a bit more convenient, you know, rather than backing up to a hard drive or something, just having it remotely done online is super convenient. So I love Backblaze. For time tracking, I'm using Timing 2. It's just great to have a little bit of information about how you spend your time and it will automatically watch, you know, the apps and the websites that you use and it'll categorize them into, you know, is this client work? Are you doing email? And it's just a nice way of being able to see where your time goes so that you can make better decisions and plan better, uh, you know, try and cut down on email and spend a bit more time on other, you know, deep work type activities. Uh, next up I have Hazel. Hazel is a file 
organization automation tool for the Mac. And the way it works is you train, you tell Hazel to watch a particular folder, like the downloads folder. And if a file gets saved into there that meets certain rules, it will perform actions on that file. So let's say you save a receipt, it's like a, a, an invoice, it will then find the date of the invoice, it will rename it to the date and then the client name or whatever it is, and it can move it to my Dropbox folder, put it in my receipts, uh, ready for my accountant. And so that just happens automatically. When the file lands in the folder, Hazel will rename it, move it, and store it. So it's just, I love it for just saving micro amounts of time throughout the day. And just if the computer can automate and store things for me, then that's awesome. So I love Hazel for document management and automating, you know, filing of receipts and things. Couple more here, uh, I really enjoy Skitch. Skitch is an Evernote product, and it's just a very simple screenshot app where I can take screenshots of things that I'm looking at, and the annotation and markup features are what I particularly like. So I can quickly add arrows and boxes and blur out bits of text, and I use this every day. I often need to share screenshots and emails and things and point to buttons and things, so I really enjoy Skitch. And the final app here, I've definitely le left one of the best till last, is Zapier. And Zapier is an automation tool that basically connects different internet services together. So if something happens in, say, your Gmail, can you make something happen in Dropbox? Like if you get an attachment, save it, something like that. And I've got dozens of Zaps set up so that if something happens in my pipe drive, I can make something happen in Asana. So it's great for those kind of repetitive tasks that you need to manually, you know, where you need to manually do something again and again. If we can get Zapier to do it for us to save time, then that's obviously a huge productivity win. So I love, love Zapier. So there you have it. That's my quickfire list of top productivity tools. If you have any questions about either of these, feel free to leave me a comment below this video. As I said at the beginning, I've got dozens of blog posts and videos about most of these things here. So have a look on my website or YouTube for some extra help as well. And thanks again for watching this video.